Intel today announced its first major product on the Optane platform, the DC or data center P4800X. This is a data center drive. It's not a consumer device. You should not buy it as a consumer, but it will be using the Optane platform and 3D Crosspoint architecture. These are things which will not change as they move toward consumer products probably later this year or maybe sometime next year. Sometime soon, it will happen. That's just how these technologies work. So we're gonna be talking about that today just to get everyone hooked in. The device announced today, the P4800X, cost $1,520. It's an NVMe SSD. It is 375 gigabytes. And then the software bundle is $1,951. So that's quite expensive, but we're gonna go over why in a moment. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by EVGA and their new 1080 Ti FTW3 ICX card, which will launch within the next few weeks. The card uses the new ICX NTC thermistors for measurement of temperature across the board. Learn more in the link below. So some housekeeping stuff first. Optane, 3D Crosspoint, and Quantex. These are all words that we need to kind of define before getting into things. Optane is Intel's platform leveraging 3D Crosspoint architecture. Quantex is the Micron version of this, and Intel and Micron worked together to create 3D Crosspoint. So they are both working on this. They both have hands-on. They just have different implementations to some extent with Intel's being called Optane. That is the platform. That's the collection of everything. 3D Crosspoint is the actual architecture underlying this. This was built as a means to solve some trouble in the memory and storage spaces, particularly as it pertains to enterprise and data center. That's why they're starting here. So the basic example, the easiest, would be to look at something like the New York Stock Exchange. You look at a stock exchange, all they care about is being first, just like a lot of YouTube commenters. And so they want to be first to make that trade. They want to be first to get in the door with whatever transaction they're doing. Unfortunately, storage is not that fast. It's gotten a whole lot better with SSDs, but memory is still the absolute fastest type of access you could make outside of the CPU's cache. S memory, though, is not that big, and when you get those bigger capacities, like the one terabyte servers that you could build, it's expensive as hell. So what do you do? Well, you probably throw a ton of SSDs in there and maybe put them in a RAID or something like that. That's still not great. SSDs have a higher latency than memory. They're not quite as fast as memory, and the upside is they have more storage. So the cost per gigabyte is far better. It's non-volatile. That has some other advantages, potentially. What Intel and Micron are trying to do is create a middleman device between memory and storage. This means that we're looking at something that is uh, going to be faster than SSDs in terms of access times, not necessarily the sequential speeds or the random speeds, though some exceptions apply. But access times and latencies will be better but slower than memory overall, uh, though you get some of the benefit of extra capacity. Now, that said, at 375 gigabytes for $1,520, doesn't sound so great, but that's, again, a data center drive, so things are a bit different in that space. Now, another thing to clear away here, the interface to talk to Optane is not some new special Optane interface. This is not like NVLink or anything like that. It is using standard interfaces, so it can function, Optane can be deployed in M.2 devices, in DRAM, DDR4-sized devices, and in AICs or add-in cards. That would be your PCIe Gen 3 four-lane type of add-on. Uh, this is going to be interesting going forward because right now all we have today, the P4800X, is a data center drive, it's a PCIe drive, it plugs into a PCIe slot, it functions on NVMe as the interface. What's different is as things move into memory, and Intel makes DIMMs with Optane, where you might have an M.2 stick using non-volatile, effectively, memory. Uh, so that's something that we're interested in in the future, but we don't have information on that too much today, other than what's already been exposed in the past few months. Before getting into the technical details, just the standard note, there's a bigger article in the description below Patrick Stone wrote it. He focused on all of the detail collection during the press event. So you should check that out if you want more of the detail. I'll give you most of it as far as starters. He's got the rest. Another note here. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of slides and we don't have any B-roll. I don't like doing voiceover over a slideshow, but we'll be doing some of that because Intel didn't allow any video capture or B-roll of the devices at the press event or the demos. 
even though they already have photos of the same devices online. I don't know why they decided to do that, but uh, I'll have some slides for you for things where I'm not on camera. The data center P4800X is the first Optane device announced and is meant for use in servers with Xeon processors and compatible motherboards. That would be an E5 V2 or E7 V2 or better. The P4800X will be broadly available by second half with initial availability starting today. Again, this is a data center drive. It's not really meant for anyone in our core audience, but we'll talk about it as the same exact technology will be coming to the consumer drives at some point in the future. Don't have full details on that yet, but there will not be an architectural change in a substantial way from data center to consumer. It's more or less going to be disabling features that you don't need to drive price down. So that means this stuff applies going forward as a consumer. The P4800X can be used as a supplement to system memory or as storage configurable through Intel memory drive. There are limitations to the expansion of the technology, most notably system memory expansion is not recommended to exceed eight times the amount of DRAM installed, and each 375 gigabyte Optane SSD is only good for 320 gigabytes of system memory expansion. It also appears that only the AIC is usable as system memory, not the U.2 version, though we're still waiting on more information from that. Optane is a combination of 3D crosspoint memory media, Intel memory and storage controllers, Intel interconnect IP, and Intel software. The 3D crosspoint storage media is a solid state architecture, which is defined in our articles below. The memory and storage controllers, we're told anyway, work similarly to flash NAND SSD controllers with some notable exceptions that will likely be discussed in detail when we actually have one of these things to review. The interconnect IP and Intel software appear to be a combination of in-house developed code and licensed software from a company called ScaleMP, which specializes in virtualization and symmetric multiprocessing, allowing for a single piece of software to take advantage of large numbers of aggregate CPUs and massive amounts of shared memory. The controller's main job is to interface between NVMe and 3D crosspoint media and storage is architected at the byte level. So this gives Intel some flexibility with regard to making DIMMs or storage devices in the future. When making storage devices, they are adapting to a block level. So that allows Intel's 3D crosspoint media and Optane platform to communicate via NVMe's four kilobyte block schema. That's important. We're not really sure how this is happening just yet, those details haven't been disclosed, but if we ever find out, which in theory we will, we'll update you in an article or a video. What we were told is that one four kilobyte read is spread across multiple channels per die using Intel's proprietary controller programming. We now know that there are a total of 28 dies spread across a seven channel controller, and that controller works best with an even die to channel loading. One major difference at the chip level between NAND and 3D Crosspoint is the way writes are done. In Flash NAND, a cell has to be erased before it can be written again, and that means that the controller has to clean up a block at a time for every write. This cleaning process is non-existent with 3D Crosspoint, as it has a write-in-place design, rather than a PE cycle in the way that we are used to with SSDs. And that means when a write is requested, the cell's properties are just altered, not cleared, and then altered or rewritten in that case. As discussed in the article linked below, the read behavior of the cells is electrically similar, creating a uniform read-write behavior that means that both operations should be efficient. A final interesting point is that we were told that there is some wear leveling handled by the controller so that specific cells don't die out faster than others. This indicates that there must be some sort of table lookup, which means that there could be time added to latencies. That was about as much detail as Intel was giving us though at the chip level. These are data center drives. You could actually buy one if you wanted to. They're not meant for you, but you could pick one up. They are supposed to deliver on lower latency. As stated previously, that's more comparable to RAM than to an SSD. Latency is a lot lower here. Does it matter in enthusiast or consumer use cases? I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm healthily skeptical about it. But for now, we know that the Enterprise P4800X is meant to be better with latencies than SSDs and better with endurance than SSDs, capable of sustaining something like 30 total drive writes per day for three plus years. That's, that's a lot of read and write cycles. So those drives will last a lot longer, in theory, based on what Intel tells us, than the SSDs currently outdo. So that's an interesting point. 
The latencies are lower. Uh, reportedly, they should average something like 10 microsecond latency on typical reads and writes. And Intel has also uh, shared with us information that the drives perform steadily under 2 gigabyte per second workloads. What an Optane SSD can do that flash NAND SSDs can't do is increase load and allow the latency to remain the same across that load until saturation of the data bus. That's new. That said, Optane is really not built for sequential workloads. So if all you do, data center user or not, is push massive sequential files back and forth all day, this might not be for you. So you might be better off with SSDs for that, but in terms of randoms, this is where Optane is targeted right now for the drive that we were shown today. Uh, and then latency is being the bigger item of note. So this is just the beginning of Optane. We don't have a whole lot of information outside of the data center stuff today. Crosspoint and Optane have a lot more information out there that we have to dig through. You can find the article below if you want more of it. As for how much you should be interested in this, uh, I'll say the things that we always say, which is don't pre-order this. If you see the P4800X and you think that you want it, one, where did you get your money? And two, wait for actual reviews of the product. It probably won't come from us, but look for it from someone else. That's not really a place that I specialize in. So uh, P4800X, I'm sure there will be reviews out there. Look for those before you buy the thing because it's a big expense and uh, it's questionable how much you'll see as a consumer, as an everyday user, enthusiast, or otherwise. Data center looks good. It looks promising, but I am uh, I have reservations about getting too hyped about Optane for consumers right now. We will see as things progress and as Intel gives us more information. If that changes, and once we can actually test the thing, that would be nice uh, and see how it performs and see if it's actually worthwhile. But for today, just hold on, wait, and uh, we'll let you know how it progresses. Otherwise, keep an eye out for P4800X reviews. I'm sure someone will do them. I don't know that the typical sites you follow will if they're related to us. So as always, thank you for watching. Link in the description below for more information. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, gamersnexus.net for the articles. We have a couple on Optane already. One was written at CES. We've got a newer one. And I'll see you all next time.